All right, we're ready to learn about functional groups. This is a huge piece of organic chemistry. So don't forget about table P. This is helping us to name carbon chains. So that's a carbon connected to a carbon connected to a carbon. How many are on the chain? Nothing else in the middle it has to be carbon to carbon. What is a functional group? Well, it's part of an organic compound. It helps to determine the properties. So functional groups determine the properties of a compound. So we group them together, okay? Single carbon-carbon bonds rarely react. Remember, they're really stable. That was like back in the, hey, guess what you should know about carbon lesson. Functional groups contain other elements like oxygen or nitrogen typically. And that is going to increase the reactivity of the organic compound. So yeah, functional groups are pretty important, but don't worry, there's very little to memorize. You just have to take all the pieces you have and put them together. So look at this, table R, a lot of information, right? Let's kind of break it up, enlarge it a little bit. You see this, it identifies the class of compound, the functional group, the general formula, the example. So let's go through each column. If a question asks what class of compound is this structural formula? Is this formula? Is this name? This is your only answer. So if it says what class of compound is this? Your answer should be ether or aldehyde or alcohol, nothing else. Don't give a fancy name. They're not asking for the name. They're just asking what class of compound. I want the answer to be from that column. If a question asks what functional group, then your answer should be directly from that column. So what's the functional group for an ether? You should draw line, O, line, period, end of story. If a question asks what general formula, and it's rarely asked, but if it asks for the general formula, this is what you would write, literally from the general formula column, okay? If you are confused about naming or interpreting a name, um, look for help here, there are examples. So do I need to use an address, right, the number? What should it end with? Where does the functional group go, okay? Some um, have numbers. If you must name, use a number for those ones. Do you see how they have a number? That means they need an address. So don't skip it. If it needs an address, put an address. But some of them don't need an address. So don't put one. And usually it's because they're on the end or there's just something breaking up the chain and we're naming the two things on each side, okay? So let's look at each type of functional group. First in the list is halide or halocarbon. You should be thinking, oh, sounds like halogens. Ding, 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 group 17. So a halide is a carbon-carbon chain that has one or more halogen atoms attached to it. Maybe it just has one bromine, maybe one iodine, maybe three chlorines, okay? It's going to have a halogen atom attached, at least one. All right, alcohol, next on the list. Alcohol's functional group is OH. So this is a carbon-carbon chain with one or more OH groups attached. Now, notice it has an address. So what does that mean? It does not have to be on the end carbon. It could be anywhere, and the address tells us where. Next up, ba -dum -bum, ether. Ether's functional group is line O line. What does that mean? That means the oxygen atom is breaking up the carbon chain. So an ether is a carbon carbon chain with an oxygen atom breaking up the chain. So it's carbon, oxygen, carbon, or carbon, carbon, oxygen, carbon, 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 carbon. Doesn't matter. And that means we have to name each chain separately. So we have oxygen breaking it up. So we have carbons on this side and carbons on this side. So 
That's why you see two carbon prefixes in the name, methyl, ethyl, ether. This methyl means one carbon on one side of the oxygen, and ethyl means two carbons on the other side of the oxygen. Aldehydes, ready? Aldehydes have a functional group COH. It's C double bond O H. So an aldehyde is a carbon carbon chain with a COH at one end. Notice there's no address, no number. Why? Because it's at the end, and the end is always carbon number one. So we never have to tell you the address. It's one house on the street. That's it. It's always in the same place. Okay, ketone. Ready? A ketone has C double bond O functional group. And then it's just somewhere in the chain. Okay, so a ketone is a carbon carbon chain with one oxygen double bonded, but it's not to a, an, an end carbon or it would have been an aldehyde. So it's got to be somewhere in the middle, can't be on the end. So this time, do you see the number? Ding ding, we need an address. Why? Because it's on some of the middle, one middle carbon. And you've got to tell me which one. You can't keep it a secret. Tell me where you put the double bond O. All right, organic acids, they're next. You have C, double bond O, and then the C is bonded to an OH. So an organic acid is a carbon-carbon chain with a COOH at one end. So notice, no address. Why? Because it's always on an end carbon. I don't need to tell you an address if you know it has to be at the end. Okay. All right, an ester. An ester has the COO functional group. But notice one of those is a double bond. So an ester is a carbon-carbon chain with two oxygens bonded to a non-end carbon. And one of those oxygens has to be double bonded, okay? Now, you notice because there's an oxygen breaking up the chain, we don't use an address, right? We use how many carbons are on this side and how many carbons are on this side. That's why we have two prefixes, right? Meth and probe. And then you notice that the probe is used to name the one that has the oxygen on it. So which one has the oxygen stuck on it? That's the one we name second. Okay, we're nearing the end. Are you ready? Amine. Amine is a nitrogen. And nitrogen forms three bonds, not four, like carbon. Okay, so an amine is a carbon carbon chain with a nitrogen attached to the chain. So it could be on carbon number one, it could be on carbon number four. Okay, so see how we have a number, an address? We got to say where. Now, most of the time in this class, most of the time it's at the end, but not always. So if you are given one that you have to name and it's not on the end, uh, you have to use a different number than one, right? Whew, that's a lot, ready? Last one, amide. An amide has a C double bond, O and an N. So it's a carbon-carbon chain with a C-O-N attached to the chain. And this one is even more so almost always at, at the end. And how do I know? I'm not given um, an address, okay, for this one. So you're going to see this one at the end, okay? Whew, oh, my goodness, that was so much, right? That's functional group. So we're taking everything we learned from table P and table Q and now table R, and we're learning about functional groups, those bonds uh, with oxygen and nitrogen in particular that give organic compounds their unique properties. There is going to be a follow-up video with practice. So watch that one. It'll be important.